Hi guys and welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny and as always I thank you very much for choosing to spend some time with me. Um, before I go any further I just want to say uh, July is my anniversary here on YouTube. This is year number three. I started in 2020 and I just want to thank everybody for all of the support and encouragement you have given me over the last three years. It has been a really fun and uh, interesting and learning journey. And I have really appreciated getting to know a bunch of you. And um, yeah, so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, today I am wearing, you will notice, Jen will be excited to see that I have turned finally turned my uh, beautiful Ecot fabric from Stone Mountain and Daughter into an actual garment. This is the Chris Wood Sews parasol dress and I did a little hack on this and I will show you that in a minute. Uh, before I do, let's see, I have a couple of other things to talk to you about. I know I, I am doing a little giveaway on the Sriracha Matchy um, Matchy Cloud Linen It'll be towards the end of the video, so if you're here just for that, just check the timestamps below because I'll put it below and you can just fast forward to that. Um, I, I uh, of course, because whenever you do something that says like giveaway or something like that attracts like hackers. So last week, right after I posted my video, as soon as people started posting comments, somebody hacked my my YouTube account and posted it as me saying congratulations message me at some place that I've never heard of. Anyways, I went through and deleted all of those, but I just wanted to apologize. I have no idea how that happens. I don't understand how they can post something with my icon next to it. It's really weird. I, I contacted YouTube about that once before and they couldn't help me either. So anyways, I apologize for that. I did try to delete all of those. I will have a winner for you today. Um, I wanted to tell you guys, I'm a little late to this game. Sorry, I feel like my chair's... Is that better? That's better. Um, I, I know I'm a little late to this game. The I've been listening to this podcast. You guys know I love to listen to podcasts when I'm sewing. And the one I've recently um, started listening to is called Check Your Thread. It's done by a gal named Zoe. Apparently, she's the gal who started Me Made May back on her blog years ago. If you haven't already checked out her uh, podcast and you're interested in sewing and uh, sustainable sewing in particular, but fiber, history, fabrics, all those things, she covers all those things and her, her show is really good. So as with everything, I'll leave links below. Um, yeah, Check Your Thread is the name of that. I think the one... I just finished listening to her double pockets. It was a two series, two podcast episode on fitting garments, and I found that really interesting. Um, and then there was another one, but anyways, really good, really good podcast. Okay, the other thing before I go into uh, my Chris Woodsow's dress, I'm hoping some of you guys saw over on Instagram this week. Um, here, where's my picture? I posted these pants that I just finished. I actually started them last week and then I had to do some, I, I made a muslin, I had to do a couple of alterations to the pants. These are the loose pants from Talco Magazine. I think I was talking about them last week. This is in the hot pink linen. It's actually called Watermelon. Um, and this linen is from Fabric Mart Fabrics. Um, I'll also leave a link for you guys to my Instagram, so if you're not already following me there, uh, please do, because I'm going to try to post midweek over there anything that I, I finish. Anyways, I just wanted to tell you guys about these um, pants, which I really love. This is a little bit out of my comfort zone. I don't usually wear things with like a high-fitted waistband. Actually, I don't ever wear anything with a high-fitted waistband. I... Um, I can't remember. I think I cut a size D. I think their sizes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like that. I think I cut a size D. Anyways, whatever I cut, I cut for my hip measurement, and I probably should have cut for my waist measurement because that would have put me up a so one size up. Even though this was gap, this size was gapping a little bit in the waist. I just feel like a size up might have been a little bit more comfortable fit. This, there's nothing wrong with the way this fits. It's just that the crotch 
sits a little closer to my body than I'm used to. Anyways, the alterations I did to this, I had to straighten out the hip curve a little bit because it was a little too curvy in the sides. So it stuck out a bit on the sides. And also I ended up putting some elastic in the waist back in the back of the waistband. There is a center back panel. Um, this is one side and then another side and then one center back panel. I put a lace elastic in that center back panel and when it was sewn and finished, my elastic was two inches smaller than that original panel. That allowed the pants to like sit up closer to my body. The waist isn't really probably too big for me. Like I said, I, I feel like I could have gone up a size, but because I have a pretty serious sway back, everything sticks away from my body there. So the elastic really helped. Anyway, I was a little bit intimidated by this pattern. I thought it was going to be a little bit more of a challenge than it was. It was actually really simple to make. Um, it was really fun to make and I really love these pants slash skirt. So if you've been considering them, um, I, I recommend the pattern. You may consider going up a size just for comfort because that th the issue is that the one the right hand leg is really big and flowy, obviously, and then the left side leg is pretty close fitting. For me, that left side leg was a little too close fitting, so that's why I felt like I should have gone up a size. If you feel like that might be an issue, then you may also want to go up a size. Okay, that was the loose pants. Today, I am wearing my Chris Woods Sews parasol dress. I have seen this multiple times on Instagram and around the web and whatnot. I really love this dress. I loved it from the minute I saw it. Um, what I didn't love was this. You can see here, there's a picture of the, the back of the dress. It ha originally has a tie that goes right across. It, you sew it in at the very top, at the shoulder, and then you tie it across the back like this. I, when I first saw this, the reason I didn't buy this pattern right away is because I saw that and I was like, ugh, I, I hate that tie. And then I thought, if you don't use a tie, it's not going to stay on your shoulders. And then I decided I didn't really hate the tie. Maybe I would just try it because I really love the dress. So I made the dress. This is what it looks like on me originally. And I know you're not going to be able to see here, but the back is pretty low. And because the back is low, not in this picture, but in real life, you could actually see my the bottom of my bra strap. If I wore a black bra, that probably wouldn't be an issue, but of course, I almost never wear a black bra. I usually wear something like red or fuchsia or green, something that will stand out. I also just wasn't really that crazy about the way that tie felt. So I put in a little, oh here, here's the better picture. I'll show you, this is a better picture of the back. Um, so I decided to make a quote unquote modesty panel for the back of my dress. And that is how it is today. So I will show you, should I show you a picture of it? Well, here's a picture of the modesty panel when it's finished. And now I will take you really quickly to my tutorial on how I made that panel. Okay, so here we have our parasol dress all ready to go. I have already put it on and tied the ties um, so that I know how, how far it needs to be across. That's the distance that where it sits on me where it feels comfortable. If you already know you're not going to use the ties, just don't put them in. Make the dress and then just um, pin a ribbon or bias tape or something at the shoulder, that which is right at the top, that fold line, and um, use that to tie it shut and see where how much distance you need between the two. Okay. So for me, I know, I'm just guessing, but I think if I make this come up four inches from the bottom point, I will be good. And that is probably two, three, four. That'll sit right here. That's probably enough to keep the shoulders from falling off. So I'm going to say I want my triangle to be four inches long. And then I'm going to measure up, let's see, one, two, three, four is right here. I'm just going to put a pin on each side right here and right here. And I'm actually going to leave those in so I know exactly where to put my little um, panel when I'm done with it. Now, I'm going to measure, I'm not doing a very good job there. There. 
I'm gonna measure that from this edge to this edge. You can see actually, it looks like it's almost exactly two inches from side to side. So we want it to be two inches wide at the top. All right, we're gonna put this aside for a second. Okay, so let's make our little um, insert piece. I'm gonna fold this piece of paper in half. I want that top edge to be straight. We also want this fold to be straight. Okay, let's cut some of this off. All right, so we know we need the top to be two inches wide, which is really only one inch because it's folded. So that's right here. And then we also know that we need it to be four inches long. So one, two, three, four is right here. That's our insert piece. Just do this like this. Now the bottom, uh, the waistline seam allowance uh, that we want to sew into is two and a half inches below this point. So we're going to make a mark there too. Two and a half is right about here. Let's add a seam allowance of about a half an inch, let's say. So we're gonna make that three inches. I'm just gonna draw a line straight across at three inches, just like that. This line, we wanna sew this in the seam on the side here. I'll show you where I mean. We wanna sew it down in this stitching line right here. That's seven eighths of an inch away from the edge. So let's make our sort of seam allowance thing here and a, an inch and an eighth. So that'll be, which will give us a quarter of an inch to play with. So that's gonna be right like that. That looks good. This last two and a half inches right here is just gonna be straight like that. What did we say? Two and a half? I think it's three inches. Sorry. That last three inches <laughs> is going to be straight, just like that. Okay? So that's what your pattern piece is going to look like. Um, I'm, so it's I'm folding this together, wrong sides together. And I'm going to place this edge, this top edge right here, goes up along a fold. Just like that. And now we're just gonna cut that out. Now I'm gonna take it just like this, and I'm gonna go to, to the over to the serger, and I'm just gonna serge these three edges. Okay, I put a little piece of cardboard in here so you guys can see what I'm doing. But we just want to be sure this is laying really flat. You might want to put cardboard in there anyway, so you don't pin to the um, front. All right, so we can see pretty clearly where our the top of our little insert is supposed to go. I'm gonna lay this in here like this. So now it's nice and even. You wanna be sure that it's equidistant, sort of sitting in the middle, so you can catch all the sides. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just gonna pin it right along this stitching line. Let's move that over a little, like that. So I'm gonna pin it right along here. I know this is black and you guys aren't gonna be able to see the stitching, but you'll know what I mean once you get this together. And I am gonna pin it all the way down to the waistland, waistline. I'm gonna do it on both sides. Okay, once I have this stitched in, or sorry, pinned in, I'm just gonna flip it over to the wrong side and double check to make sure that I've caught my little panel on both sides. It feels like I have, but double check it all the way down. Then we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're just gonna start right here at the top and you're gonna stitch right over your other line, your original line of stitching all the way to the bottom. Just make sure you back tack at the top and the bottom so your piece doesn't fall out. Okay, so that is my uh, panel inserted. This is the inside of my dress. 
I don't know if you'll be able to see it. My panel is a little uneven at the bottom, so it must have shifted a bit. That's okay. It's going to work just fine. I wanted to say I did do um, a stitch in the ditch from the right side right here in the waistband. And the reason I did that was because I wanted this edge to be secured. It's not a big edge, so you might not even need to do that. Um, I'll show you from the right side. You now have this flap here that we want to secure. So you can do a couple of things. You can um, just go to the sewing machine and edge stitch from here to here, pivot and go back up to here. Um, or you can hand stitch it down. I think um, I think I'm actually just going to stitch one on the sewing machine. Okay guys, that is my uh, Modesty panel finished. I'm pretty darn happy with it. Um, now I just need to get rid of my ties and try it on. Um, remember that this is also a really easy solution if you feel like the front is too low. You could do the same thing in the front. Okay, so there's my uh, Modesty panel tutorial. I think I said in the tutorial that it's also a really good thing to use because of the way this dress is made, this front actually sits up a little bit higher than the back, so I didn't really feel like I needed it in the front. Um, the panel that I put in makes it perfectly comfortable. It is not falling off my shoulders at all. And um, yeah, I think it makes a big difference to me. I, I much prefer it with the panel. What I was gonna say is, I think I said in the tutorial also, it's a good thing to remember whenever you have something too low in the front, a really tiny little modesty panel or even a higher one is a good option. It could be a really cool place to use a contrasting fabric or a different pattern fabric or something like that. Anyways, here are a couple more pictures of me in this dress. I love this dress. Excuse my pasty white legs. I usually wear something longer like pants or a longer slip, but it is way too hot and humid here for that. Um, anyways. Yeah, I really, really love this dress and I am sure I will be making another one. I'm gonna do our drawing now. And as you know, I go old school with like a little bowl here. I meant to say, one of you commented and I can't remember who it was now, that you would love the linen but you didn't wanna enter the drawing because you live out of the country. I am happy to send um, this fabric anywhere in the world and I should have said that last week. So. I apologize. Whoever left me that comment, I went ahead and put you in the ball here. And so you are in the drawing. Let's see. I'm going to try to give it a good shape without dropping any. Okay, ready? Drum roll. I don't know how to do drum roll on this um, YouTube, on my uh, editing stuff, or I would. Anyways, um, all right, here we go. I can't see any of these. Let's see who put it. So the winner of three yards of Matchy Matchy Sewing Club Cloud Linen in Sriracha is Pamela Wilkinson. Pamela, I will leave you a comment um, below your comment in my comment section from last week. And hmm, what should I do? Yeah, I'll just leave a comment on your comment. But also, if you get this, if you see this beforehand, just message me over on Instagram. If you're not available on Instagram, leave me a message below and we will figure something else out. I figure out a different way for me to get your information and get this sent out to you. Pamela Wilkinson, three yards of Sriracha linen coming your way. All right, guys, that is it for me this week. As always, I thank you so much for stopping by. And until next week, happy sewing.